What makes an audiophile speaker? <laughs> this sounds like a can of worms to me. It's from Matt in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he starts out saying, warning, audiophile heads may explode. <laughs> Certainly mine might. Okay, Matt writes, outside of being more expensive and outside of extremes such as the obvious cheap speakers and extremely expensive speakers, what constitutes a speaker being high-end? I think audiophiles believe that speakers classified as high-end means better sound. Sounds reasonable. I don't find this to always be true. Mm -hmm. Exploding heads. Some will say materials the speakers are constructed out of, but who says one type of material is better than another? Some will say measurements, but who decides what value of measurements are better one or the other? For the fact that how we perceive sound quality is subjective, I would describe it as a different sound, not necessarily better. Okay, well, there's some fuel for conversation there. First off, materials absolutely matter. If you look at some big expensive speakers like take the YG Acoustics or the Magico speakers. Now those things are built like proverbial brick shithouses. And, and I don't say that out of uh, uh, being critical. They are aluminum and they have infrastructure. They're made out of solid billets and it's machined and all of that. So does the fact that it's aluminum make it sound better? No. No, absolutely not, Matt. You're right. What does make it sound better is that by their construction, they don't have cabinet resonances. Okay? That's what matters. It could be made from compressed dog shit. Doesn't really matter if compressed dog shit was good stuff, frankly haven't tried it, then that would be a great material. The point is, whether it's cement, MDF, compressed dog poo poo, aluminum, if you manage to build by whatever means, material, construction, or both, a cabinet that doesn't resonate, doesn't flex when the woofer starts going, which adds colorations and things that we can talk about that are unwanted, then materials do matter because it will sound better without all those resonances, however you get there, okay? So that, that's, that's number one. Um, the other thing we talked about, measurements. Uh, if you watch these videos, you know me. Measurements don't mean squat when it comes to how it's going to sound. We know that measurements that are bad are going to, like if, if a speaker is rolled off at eight kilohertz and or it has no bass, right? Now that measurement tells us something, absolutely. If that measurement is acceptable and it's within the realm of what we're looking for, at that point, we don't know much more than that. We don't know that it, anything other than it doesn't have a lot of distortion. It doesn't, it meets a certain level of performance that is required before we get to first base, right? So they've hit the ball, you've passed all the tests, now it's okay to run the first base. And once you get there, we'll see how fast you can run. Because I can't tell from the initial hit measurements how it's going to sound. Absolutely correct. There is no measurement that tells what my ear brain combination is going to interpret sound as being. There really aren't. I mean, we can play like there are, but there aren't. So no, we can't tell by measurements and we, we do have to listen. We can tell some things by construction. We can do the knock-knock test on the side of the speaker and go, ooh, that hurt my knuckles. That thing's dead. And that's a good thing. We can tell by the shape of the speaker. But to Matt's original question, what makes a speaker audiophile? And that is something, it's sort of a constant theme that I have expressed over and over in my talks, my writings, these videos, if it sounds like music, if it sounds like musicians are playing in the room, if the speaker disappears, 
and in its place we have people, instruments, that have filled the room with what sounds like real instruments, real voices, real bass. That's an audiophile's speaker. Or it's certainly the audiophile's dream. Okay? Now, as I've mentioned several times, I am working on a book called The Audiophile's Guide. And the first copy or the first edition of The Audiophile's Guide will be the stereo. In the stereo, I will describe exactly how we can take pretty much any pair of decent speakers and turn them into audiophile speakers by virtue of our setup process and how we do everything around it. Because most speakers of reasonable quality can be audiophile speakers through proper setup. So it's, it's, it's involved and, and, and we'll get there. Matt, I hope that answers your question. It's a good one. And thanks, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.